Good morning. morning. Welcome to Good Shepherd. Welcome to Sunday morning. Welcome to worship in person and online. Today we have everything for you to worship together our Lord Jesus Christ. First and foremost, happy Thanksgiving to all of you. I hope you had a wonderful time with your family this past week. We will be thankful today as well because today it's also our pledge Sunday when we pledge our gifts, our resources, our money to the ministry of the church for the next year. And we will hear more about it in a minute when Paul Knight, our stewardship chair, shares some words with us. It is also the first Sunday in Advent, so I'm wearing blue, the church is in blue. Some of you are in blue, thank you for getting the memo. And we have the candles in purple because they did not get the memo. But we enjoy this season of Advent together nonetheless, and we rejoice in this expectation of our Lord Jesus Christ. The other good news was is today we will receive new members to our congregation, and the ministry of this church continues to thrive as we receive new members into our fellowship. Unfortunately, our new members get sick, and they cannot be here with us this morning, so we'll postpone that when they feel better. And last but not least, today is Communion Sunday. So please make sure to have one of your cups. If you're watching at home, please have your elements ready. And we will begin with the Advent Liturgy, that if you're here in the building, make sure you have one of those. If you're at home, please follow from home. Now, with this being said, let us begin our worship service with our first hymn. Wake, awake, for night is flying. And before we sing, another announcement I forgot to mention, I would like to welcome our guest musician uh, this morning, Melanie Loda. Thank you so much, Melanie, for being with us this morning. What a joy and a privilege for us to have you and share your gift with us. Now, please sing with me first hymn, 436. Let's 
Spirit. Amen. Please, you may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. One of my uh, favorite temple talks was uh, by John Osborne, who's with us here today. And I think it's appropriate uh, to think about what he said about the white wolf and the black wolf. The white wolf is allowing light and optimism and the goodness of uh, life be with us. And the black wolf is letting the dark side, uh, the pessimism, not uh, certain about the future or worrying about the future. And I think that's particularly appropriate uh, during the couple of years uh, it feels like two years, it's probably not been quite that yet, but what we've been through as a congregation and a world with uh, COVID, and uh, you know, uh, I, I think we've done fabulous as a congregation in terms of uh, keeping an optimistic outlook, maintaining a higher attendance, uh, if you think about our uh, online service. So um, we've kept, uh, our life around the white wolf and uh, this is pledge Sunday so there's a lot of ways you can give it's online it's here at church in the offering plate uh, we have in the front uh, of the, of the, in the narthex the uh, all the options and we appreciate uh, the many people who've given and we look forward to uh, another great uh, year and thanks for your pledging and if anything we can do to help you or give you more information uh, let us know as well thank you Please join me now with the Advent Liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us open our hearts to the mercy of God. 
You may kneel if you're able. Lord God, during this season of Advent, we recall the first coming of Christ, and we call you by name, Emmanuel, God with us. Because of God's promise of salvation in Christ, I therefore declare to you that your sins are forgiven. We now prepare ourselves and our community for a new birth and a new life as we await the second advent of Christ. O oh, come, Emmanuel, and bless us with the light of your presence. O oh, come, Emmanuel, for your unity and holiness May the Lord bestow favor upon you and give you peace. May you be with you and with all God's Let us offer now this peace of Christ to one another. If you're here in the building, please share the peace with the International Sign of Peace. If you're watching live, please share the peace with those who are watching with you this morning. And if you are by yourself, it was this season of Advent, watching maybe later on Sunday during the week, look at a window and say, the peace of the Lord be with you. Because from right here, from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Glenbrook, New Jersey, I'm saying back to you and also with you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please remain standing.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, alert us to the threatening dangers of our sins and redeem us for the life of justice. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This morning is from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm this morning comes from Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love for they are from everlasting. Today's gospel comes from the gospel according to Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. And this is the good news for us this morning. Just then a lawyer stood up and test, to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You are given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who, who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now, now by chance, a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. 
So, likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him. Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spent. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of Robert? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. It's the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace dear church from our Lord Jesus Christ today, first Sunday in Advent, today Thanksgiving weekend, today Fletch Sunday, today the last Sunday of our stewardship campaign for 2022. Now I chose this text, the Good Samaritan for today, for our pledge, particularly our pledge Sunday and the end of our stewardship campaign. I chose this text, and those of you who have been watching and following our ministry, you know that I preached on this text already this year. I preached already on this text, the Good Samaritan, Gospel of Luke, one of the four Gospels that we have. And at that time, I followed Martin Luther King's approach to this text. At that time, I mentioned to you that this text was the last, it was the text for the last sermon that Martin Luther King Jr. preached before being assassinated the following morning. Best sermon ever preached on this text. You can Google it, Martin Luther King, last sermon, and you will find it on YouTube. If you're watching at home and you are good at multitasking, you can look it up right now on a different screen and put it in the chat so those who are watching can find it later. Martin Luther King, in his sermon, he focuses on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho and on the two people who did not stop for the Good Samaritan, the priest and the Levite. And when I preach about this text in the past, early this year, I followed his approach. Now today, for Pledge Sunday, first Sunday in Advent, I'm going to follow someone else's approach. I'm going to follow the approach of Margaret Thatcher. Those of you young enough may remember Margaret Thatcher, Prime Minister in England. I don't know if this is true in real life, but if you've been watching The Crown, the last season, season four, there is a scene between Margaret Thatcher and the Queen of England, and in that scene, talking one-on-one -on -one about politics and the world, Margaret Thatcher quotes this story to the Queen, and this is her approach. Margaret Thatcher says to her, the Good Samaritan in the Bible, the Good Samaritan in the Gospel of Luke, did not only have good intentions, the Good Samaritan did not only have the willingness, the desire to help, the Good Samaritan, Margaret Thatcher said, had money. Had money. And money made the difference. And in today's Gospel, we can see that. If you follow the Gospel today, you can see that the Good Samaritan not only took care of the man by the side of the road, being left half dead by robbers, not only heals him, you know, first aid kind of stuff, and bandages up with oil and wine, not only he puts him on its own horse, own animal, to take him to the inn, but he gives two denarii to the innkeeper, two silver coins. A denarii was a Roman silver coin. He gives him two denarii up front, two silver coins up front, and then a pledge. Did you notice the pledge? 
The good Samaritan says to the innkeeper, take care, take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spent. I pledge you that whatever money you spend extra, I will pay to you. Money up front and a pledge. So of course you can see now why I decided to use this text for today, Pledge Sunday, First Sunday in Advent. Because here we have a biblical story about giving money up front, pledge for others. Not for ourselves, like Black Friday for example, but for others. Because this is the difference between us church people and the rest of the world. This is the difference between us church people and the rest of the community. Money. We give more money to our neighbors. You and I give more money to others. And I say church people. I'm not saying Christians. Because we all have a relative who was confirmed with us, baptized with us, married to us in the church, who doesn't come to church anymore. We all have a loved one who is as Christian as we are, who doesn't show up. What I'm talking about is the people who actually show up, you and I, those who are here, the body of Christ, Christ in flesh and bone. Us, collectively, give more money to others than anyone else. Not because we're better than the neighbor, not because we are, you know, holy rollers, but because we get to hear the need of the world. That's what the church does. We come to church and we hear the cry of the world. We come to church and we are asked for money by people we know. And this is a key point of stewardship. People give to people. People give to people, and you gotta ask for money. The neighbor, your neighbor, may be a great person, but he hasn't been asked. He hasn't heard the message. But you and I, who come to church, who are church people, we have heard the message. We have come to church. We have come to church, and people that we know tell us, that there is a need of the food pantry. And what do you do? You give. You come to church and people that you know tell you that there is a need at the shelter. And what do you do? You give. You come to church and people that you know tell you that there is a need for the breakfast ministry in Pasek for the home, at the Home Depot. Parking lot. And what do you do? You give. You come to church and people that you know tell you that there are some kids who need money to go to summer camp in Camden. And what do you do? You give. You come to church and people you know tell you that there is a home with people with special needs and they need Christmas gifts to celebrate the coming of the Lord. And what do you do? You give. You come to church and you hear there is a need in the world. You hear there is someone who is hungry who needs food. Someone who is thirsty who needs water, someone who is naked, who needs clothing, someone who is a stranger, who needs welcoming arms, someone who is sick, who needs healing, someone who is in prison, who needs forgiveness. And what do you do? You give. You give because that's what we do. So this Sunday, you come to church and people that you know tell you that we have a need right here, that we need to teach Sunday school, we need to teach confirmation, we need to have a Bible study, we need to have a prayer group, we need to worship. And what do you do? 
you give. You give, and that's what you have heard during these stewardship seasons. You heard Paul, you heard Janet, and now you're hearing me asking you, ask you for money. We need your money for 2022. Your money will allow us to worship every Sunday. Your money will allow us to bless the world. Your money will allow us to proclaim high and low that God is with us. All the time. And your money will allow us to proclaim that in a broken world in the midst of a COVID-19 pandemic on its second year. Here we are, the Church of Jesus Christ, this corner of the Kingdom of Heaven, right here in the land of New Jersey, worshiping, blessing, and proclaiming that Jesus is Lord. So that was the approach of Margaret Thatcher to this text, but I don't have to tell you that that's not the traditional approach to this text. Throughout church history, the Good Samaritan story have been read in a different way. In a different way that you and I are not the Good Samaritan. You and I are the person on the side of the road. You and I are the person who's been beat up by the world and its troubles. The innkeeper in the inn is the church. And you know who the Good Samaritan is? It's Jesus. Jesus is the Good Samaritan. Jesus is the one who heals. Jesus is the one who restores. Jesus is the one who forgives. Jesus is the one who lifts up. Jesus is the one who on the cross paid for you and for me to have a second chance in life everlasting. It's what Jesus did on the cross that gives us hope, that gives us peace, that gives us forgiveness. It is Jesus' work. It is Jesus' work that allows us to have hope in a season of the year that we prepare for the coming of the Lord on Christmas Day. We enter this journey allowing us to be filled up with Jesus' hope. It is Jesus' hope that gathers us here in this church on Monday mornings in the job search work team with those who are looking for a new job. It is hope, hope to those who lost their job right before the holidays who are able to gather in this group, in this church, to find their next job. It is the hope that Jesus gives that allows people struggling with addictions, especially hard during the holiday seasons. Someone who just hit rock button, bottom at the last Thanksgiving celebration and is walking into this church fellowship hall for a 12-step program. It is hope that allows us to do what we do as a church in the name of Jesus. It is the hope that Jesus gives. It is, it is the hope that Jesus gives that lifts people up when you're in a hospital bed and you receive a card from church. It is that hope that lifts you up. It is hope that enters your house and fills it with the promise of the Almighty when you're at home and receive flowers from church. It is hope it is hope that you hear on the phone and you hear in your bones when you receive a phone call from church asking you, how are you? It's me from church. It is hope. It is hope that gives us strength when we hear our names in the prayer of the church. Our name lifted up like incense before the Lord. It is hope that Jesus gives 
It is hope that Jesus gives to all of us during this difficult time of COVID-19, in this second year of the struggle. So we come to Jesus, or should I say, so Jesus comes to us as we are beat up on the side of the road, as we are broken hearted, in pain, sick, with a troubled heart, with fear, with uncertainty, with regret. And the Lord Jesus takes us, heals us, and pays for us. Pays the ultimate price. Pays with his own life. During Thanksgiving, a lot of families have the tradition of sharing what they're thankful for. I'm sure you and your family had that opportunity as well this year. Today, as we gather at the feast of the Lord's table, we also have an opportunity to be thankful and say what we're thankful for. Let me ask you, in this year of 2021, at the Lord's table in this Thanksgiving weekend, what would you like to say thanks for to your God? What would you like to thank Jesus for this Thanksgiving weekend? What are you grateful for? On a personal note, I would like to share with you that I am grateful for you and I'm grateful to be part of this church because as some of you know, I had a loss in my family this past week and I felt so supported and cared by you. I received cards to my house. I received flowers to my house. I got text messages. I got phone calls. And I'm the pastor who's supposed to be caring for you. I was cared for by you. And I was a fellow member of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church as we walked together in faith, as we walked together in love, as we walked together this journey of Advent, waiting for baby Jesus to be born. Amen. Please sing with me our next hymn. Our next hymn is hymn number 693. Come, ye thankful people, come. Yeah. 
Continue our worship and praise, confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed, saying together, I believe in God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God, let us pray for the world, for the church, and for all our own needs. If you're watching live, please add the names of those who would like to lift up in prayer so your prayer and ours can be together as one church and one faith. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father Almighty, we come to you with thanksgiving. We come to you with gratitude. We come to you with our offerings, Lord, because you're mighty, because you care, because you provide, because you heal, because you save. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord, for being the light in our darkness, for being the rock in our storms, for being the path forward and we're trapped. We thank you, Lord, for our daily bread, that you, in your mercy, love, and abundance, never fail to provide. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, good shepherd, prince of peace, great healer. We pray this morning for all those who are sick, all those who are in pain, in body, mind, or spirit. We especially pray for Ernie and Sarah. We especially pray for Eric and Samantha. Lord, heal. We pray, Lord, for all those who struggle in different ways. We pray for all those who struggle with dementia and the mysteries of the mind. We pray for all those who struggle with anxiety, depression, and suicidal thoughts. We pray for all those who struggle in their body, in their bones, we pray for all those who struggle with addictions. We pray for all those who are brokenhearted. We pray, Lord, for those who are in need. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Spirit, breath of life. We pray for all those who call you by name, all churches, all believers, all those gathered in your many temples. We especially pray for our church. We especially pray for those in the prayers of the church. We especially pray for those whose names you can find in the chat. 
We especially pray for those whose names you can find in our hearts. We lift them all up to you, Lord. Lord, heal. Lord, restore. Lord, bless. Allow your spirit to lift us up. Allow your spirit to fill us with joy, love, and hope. Allow this Holy Spirit to blow from side to side, to blow from toes to the tip of our heads. Allow us to feel your presence and your peace. Lord, in your mercy. In this faith, Lord, in the faith of Jesus and disciples, in this faith, Lord, in the faith of Sarah and Ruth, in this faith, we come to you with our own prayer in this moment of holy silence and awe. Lord, in your mercy. To you, o Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your promises, trusting in your word, trusting in your everlasting love. Amen. You may be seated, and now I invite you to enjoy the solo for this morning. Thank you, Melanie.
What a beautiful gift. Thank you so much, Melanie. Please rise with me to have communion together in this faith and this expectation of our Lord Jesus coming in just a few weeks. We'll have communion together. If you're at home, please get your elements. And let us begin with the prayer, with the words of our faith. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all, saying, This is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And in this faith, in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and bread and wine, please join me with the prayer he taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, everything is ready. Please be loved the first part of your cup, and you have your wafer. And look at someone here at church, and say these words to that person. This is the body of Christ given for you. Please say it. This is the body of Christ given for you. Now you can take the second part. And before you have the wine or the juice in our case, look at someone else or the same person if you want and say these words to that person. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Please say it. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Christ is here. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may shine his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord may look upon you with favor and give you peace. Now please join me with our sending hymn, hymn number 836, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
the Lord. Thank you, God. And may God bless you real good. See you next week.